In this tutorial, we will have a look at standalone components. Standalone components is a new feature that will be introduced in an upcoming Angular version, which is Angular v14. But we can already access it by using a pre release version. To generate a brand new Angular project using a pre release version, we can type npx at angular slash CLI at next. This will use the next version of the Angular CLI. We can then use the new command to scaffold a new application, which we will call Lonely Components. Let's open up our generated application in VS Code. So the generated application looks like a normal Angular application. It generated a bunch of files, app components, some spec files, but it also generated a app module file. Since we want to use standalone components, we will go ahead and just simply delete the app module. Next, we will open up the app component TS and we will adjust its decorators. We will add a standalone flag, which value we set to true. So our app component is now a standalone component. So how do we bootstrap a standalone component? To bootstrap a standalone component, we have to adjust the main TS file. To bootstrap a standalone component, we will now use a function that is called bootstrap application. And this bootstrap application function accepts a standalone component, which is our app component. We can then add some catch handler to lock some errors and clean up the rest that we don't use anymore. If we now change into the directory of lonely components and run npm run start, we will get a bunch of errors. And those errors make perfect sense because we still use the code of the demo application, which uses some directives like ng switch or some components like router outlets. Those components aren't yet defined inside our app component. So let's again open up our app component TS file and add the common module and the router module to its imports. If we now recompile our application, we see that it's compiled successfully and our application now runs. So we successfully bootstrapped a standalone component. So in the next video, we will see how we can use schematics to generate standalone components.